Good afternoon, YouTube pipe community. This is New England Pipe Smoker, back here with another tobacco review on an overcast, unseasonably warm Saturday here in southern New England. So, let's get right to it. So today, I'm going to be reviewing St. James Flake by Samuel Gawith and Company. So, a review of this tobacco is, it is a vapor, or Virginia Perique. So, the description is, because there's nothing on the actual tin, is a genuine Perique is added to an already delicious and flavorsome blend of fine, bright Virginias to give St. James the light, peppery characteristic enjoyed by so many pipe smokers, medium strength. Okay? So, like I said, it is a Virginia Perique or a vapor. Um, it says that there's no flavoring uh, added to this blend. I mean, there is, most tobaccos do have some type of small flavoring added to their blends, um, but they're saying there was none added to this blend. It does come in flake form, and this is how the flake comes to you. It's about one inch uh, wide. It's a pretty thick cut flake. It did come out of the tin extremely wet. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever watched Stopping Things YouTube channel. He gives a rating as a drowned rat as the most, and then he has a new category, Samuel Gawith. This was a Samuel Gawith. This was extremely wet tobacco. It took a couple hours, if not an overnight drying time. And we'll get into the characteristics of this tobacco as we move forward in this review. So for the purposes of this review, I did separate it into different pipes because we all know that different tobaccos take on different smoking characteristics depending on which pipe you smoke it in. So I did smoke it in a couple different pipes that I have set aside just for Virginias and Virginia Periques. So I did smoke it in a Savinelli 101, a Peterson B10, which is what I'll be lighting behind me in a minute, an LJ Peretti uh, little pot pipe that I got from the LJ Peretti store, which is actually right here, and a Peterson 106 billiard. So those are the four pipes that I uh, used in terms of this review. So with this, you can buy it in. 1.50 gram tins, okay? As of this morning, which is 10, excuse me, 11.7, Pipes and Cigars has this blend for $9.29. Drinking some Sam Adams White Christmas, a new blend they put out this year. Um, I'm definitely not liking as much as Wintalaga. Wintalaga is probably my favorite uh, ale beer. I mean, excuse me, lager. Smoking Pipes. Has this blend, this uh, 50 gram tin, for $9.33 a tin, and Four Noggins has it for $9.99 a tin. So we're going to get right into the reviews. So the first pipe that I did smoke it in was the Savinelli 101. Now like I said, the blend did come out very wet and did take some drying time. The most difficult part of this entire blend was trying to find what worked with this blend and what didn't. It was way too wet to smoke in the beginning. Now, mind you, I rubbed everything out. Okay, we'll preface it with that. So, I mean, right away it was too wet to smoke. Then you, then the other end of the spectrum, when it was too dry, it was too dry. It required many relights. Did get some tongue burn. Just couldn't keep it lit. It wasn't an enjoyable smoke at times. And you try to find that Goldilocks just right in the middle. And it, it was tough to do. It, it really was. Um, so right away, in the tin opening, when you're going to open it up, you get a strong smell of that plum flavoring. That's going to be the Perique. Um, so like I said, overwhelmingly strong fruit flavoring, which I detect as plum. Um, like I said, that was the most overwhelming thing. As soon as you open the tin, it overwhelms the senses. Not in a negative way, but you can definitely tell that it's there. Um, so with that being said, it did take some drying time. I usually let it dry for a couple hours or even overnight. And I said I smoked it wet. I smoked it bone dry. I tried smoking it, you know, in the middle as well. It did turn into some difficult smoke just because I couldn't keep it consistent. So anyways, in the Savinelli 101 billiard pipe, like I said, it was rubbed out, easy to pack, uh, medium to difficult to light. Uh, I used very dry tobacco that I left over a day or two as kindling on the top just to get it going. Um, on the initial light, it was dominating taste of plum, not overpowering but definitely that was the dominant flavor. That's all I got at the time. 
um, and there was a more intense fruit smell in the room note at first. Um, every once in a while, I did get the distant uh, taste of dark chocolate. Like I said, this was every once in a while. It wasn't consistent. But I did get it every once in a while. Um, you can definitely tell that there is Perique in this blend. Because um, obviously that's, you know, in this sense it comes out in the plum flavoring. I know sometimes it comes out in a spiciness. Um, but I definitely got the plum fig fruit from the Perique. Um, I have some of you said that some people said it's way too overpowering for them. But to me, it wasn't too bad. There was some uh, peppery sensation on the retrohale, which is when you take the smoke and exhale it through the nostrils. Um, it wasn't overly so for me, cause, but I'm used to smoking. I always like smoking um, spicy cigars, usually from, cigars usually have a spice note, usually from Nicaragua, the Esteli region. So to me, it wasn't as spicy as, you know, the cigars. But maybe to some people, you know, that, that would be an overpowering uh, sensation, I guess you could say. You can feel a peppery sensation on the tongue that does linger. I said it's not overpowering, but you can just definitely tell that it's there. Um, it was a long taste and feel in the mouth. I would almost describe it as a chewy smoke. When it was left open, you almost went... You could still get that aftertaste of that chewy smoke, even after the exhale, that stayed with you up until the next puff. And it wasn't... Don't think of this as a negative. It wasn't. To me, it was a positive. It was an extra sensation in that um, smoke that I particularly liked. A lot of my cigar smoke, you get, they call it a chewy smoke, and it just stays with you in that lingering. And it was very good. And this is actually a weird thing for me. In this pipe only, I actually got a taste of black, rickler, black licorice. If anyone's ever had Sambuca, the, uh, the alcohol, picture that. Um, not consistent, and I only got it once or twice with the whole blend. I never got it from any other of the blends that I had. I was drinking water. I wasn't drinking anything that would have given me that type of aftertaste or would have muddled with that, the senses, the taste I mean. But def it was weird. I got a little bit of a Sambuca taste, that black licorice. It was odd. Towards the middle to the end of the bowl, the to me, the plum and the peppery sensation dies down and really comes through in the Virginias. You can really start tasting the Virginias at that point. You get that sweetness, some grassy notes of those Virginias. Um, it, like I said, it does produce a wet smoke. It could be from the sugars or what, maybe some flavoring and that maybe it's added. And maybe my quicker cadence also helped that along, but it did definitely was a little bit moist. Last half, last quarter of the bowl, I got a, the, the fruit sweetness went away and it was just that sweet Virginia that remained over. The bowl did require some constant relights. And when I say constant relights, I probably mean four to six. And there was some tongue bite, okay? Now we're gonna get on to the Peterson B10. We're now going to talk about what it was like smoking it in the Peterson B10, which is my 2015 Christmas pipe. So, same thing, rubbed out, tried to get it to the best I could in terms of um, moisture level. There's mild sweetness upon lighting, a mild fruitness in the retrohale, more natural sweetness from the Virginia. And there's also some minor pepper notes in the retrohale. You can actually feel a little bit of that tingling sensation. Um, like I said, it was mild in sweetness, it was more of an earthy tobacco taste through the retrohale. Um, more, like I said, in the beginning on the other pipe, the Peterson Billiard, I'm excuse me, the Savinelli 101, it was more of a fruit note. But in here, it was more of a natural earthy core. When the smoke was emanating from the pipe, or from you know your exhale, immediately you're getting that nice sweetness into the into the nostril. Uh, uh, unfortunately, the room note with this does linger as a stale cigarette smoke. So this was not one the wife was too happy about me smoking in the house. But right now she's in Florida for weeks vacation, so um, I'm gonna smoke it in the house. But like I said, in the room note, it does linger as a stale cigarette smoke. But um, upon exhale, you're really getting that fruit flavor, and you can smell. It was very one-dimensional through the life of the bowl. That's what you're getting, that earthy dominance, that light sweetness, and a slight pepper through the retrohale. It's like keeping this thing lit is a pain in the you-know-what. And then, a uh, much different experience than I smoked with the 101. Spoke, the smoke did not linger in the mouth. It wasn't that chewy sensation of that aftertaste. Um, I said the whole smoking experience was a different 
smoking experience from the billiard. Now, I'm going to quickly talk about the LJ Peretti Pop Pipe. Um, light fruit note in the retro hail. Slight chocolate notes, actually, that I got. Almost kind of like the Savinelli 101. Once again, this is a billiard pipe. So maybe that's something to do with why I'm getting those particular flavor profiles. Um, you can feel the pepper notes in the nostril, but once again, it's not overwhelming. Long aftertaste in the mouth. Once again, this came from the billiard. Um, the fruit notes increased the last quarter of the bowl, which did not happen in my uh, other blends, in uh, the bowls. In the 101, the fruit, actually, the fruit sweetness actually went away. The B10, it really wasn't there to begin with. It uh, wasn't as dominant, I would say. And the fruit notes, like I said, increased the last quarter of the bowl. Did require many relights, and there was no peppery sensation at all in the last quarter of the pot pipe. 7 l one zero ah, Peterson 106. More Virginia taste and the peppery perique. Um, but this time the perique was on the form of spice on the tongue and retrohale, not as much fruit. Which was odd because this was also a billiard pipe, but this was more consistent with the B10, more than it was consistent with the LJ Peretti and the Savinelli. Um, the spice lasts a long time on the tongue in the 106. Now, once again, you also got to consider me leaving with the with these two with the tobaccos as well. There were different uh, moistness levels. There was different smoking experiences. So you got to take that into account as well. That was a variable. It wasn't all uniform in terms of smoking experiments. Now, my reaction. It was a good blend, don't get me wrong. I kind of compared it to Wallace Flake that I reviewed a little while ago um, by Rat Trace in terms of that, that dominant um, Perique in terms of the plum, that fruit flavor you're gonna get. To me, for that price, I wouldn't buy it again. And I only say that because my smoking experiences really weren't that enjoyable. And I really think that came from the thick cut flake and the moisture level. I could not get it to a consistent um, flavor profile. When I get a vapor, usually I, if, I, if I smell the vapor, it's more of a peppery smell, more than it is the fruit, the plum, the fruitiness, I feel it's going to get a better smoke. And I usually always get better smokes. Example, LJ Peretti's Pock Square. It's ribbon cut, the moisture was great, um, and it was more of that peppery dominant sensation. Elizabethan mixture, same type of thing. Different types of vapors um, on this different end of the spectrum, I know that. But that's more of the sensation. I just have a very tough time with these wet flakes and keeping them lit. Um, I said it was enjoyable. Um, would I recommend it to a first time smoker? Probably not a new smoker because like I said the difficulty, I've only been smoking for a little over a year, and the difficulty in keeping it lit and getting the right moisture level was, was, was difficult and made for an unsatisfy, unsatisfying smoke at times. But I mean, it was a good blend. It's not something I'm going to add to my cellar. It's probably not something I'm going to buy again. Um, but once again, this is only my opinion, my, my taste profiles, and my smoking cadence. So if this is something that sounds like maybe you'd be interested in, please pick it up, enjoy it, review it. I'd love to hear your comments on it and see how it you know differs from mine. But, you know, and also as always in my videos, thank you to my subscribers that have been there. Thank you to all my new subscribers. I appreciate it. I love all the comments and suggestions on the videos and private messages. Guys, please keep them coming. I love the constructive criticism. And I also do like the comments, the positive comments. Let me know that I'm doing well and you guys like what you see. I know I took this video a little longer on 14 minutes, but I appreciate it, guys. Hopefully you guys watched it and enjoyed it. And there will be a tin opening coming up, hopefully this week. And I'm actually going to do a tin opening and initial impressions video. I didn't really get a lot of views on my regular tin openings. So I didn't know if I can add a tin opening and initial impression. You know, two bowls smoked, three bowls smoked of a blend. And do it that way. So you guys get a little bit something. I won't tell you which blend it is because that's going to give it away. But it's something that um, I've been looking forward to for some time. So once again, guys, this is the Mingle Pipe Smoker, and thank you. Have a good one.